Welcome, everybody. Beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful week, from what I can tell. We had a great day yesterday celebrating Irvine's 58th, I mean, 85th birthday. Wow. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. a great time was had in here. And I don't know who did all the cleanup, but wow, what a great job that is to put this back to normal. So, this is our last uh, session under this uh, study of talents and spiritual gifts. And the lesson today is why do we need to know and understand what our gifts are? Okay, we've been uh, through the last week where we talked about gifts and, and realizing a number of things about those, but why do we have them? Why do we need to use them? So we're going to talk about that this morning. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles first, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. I'm going to read that just one verse and just uh, open it up to for your your comments and what you see in in this verse. Ephesians <clears throat> chapter two verse ten says, "For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in." For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. Quick comments. What, what, what do you see there? What do you think that's telling us? God has a plan for each of us. <laughs> God has a plan for each of God us. God has a plan for each of us. Mm -hmm. Very good. And God created all of us. And he says in his word, he's given us abilities, given us talents. It breaks his heart when we don't use them. Yeah. Very, very good. We've been created for good works. We are not. And there's, there's another thing that, that with this old guy, it was that other people saw something in me that I didn't see, and they made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that a few weeks ago. Absolutely. Troy. Brother, this verse uh, addresses uh, uh, a philosophical question that is very important in this world, and that is, what is our purpose? Exactly. Um, and I think it speaks to that. I don't, I don't think it's the totality of the answer, but it definitely speaks to the purpose. We're created to do good works. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. so we have a purpose, each one of us. I think it's very well said. I mean, each and every one of us, there's no exception. Uh, you accept Christ, you're a Christian walking on this earth. There's something in you that you've been prepared for. And we've been studying the past three weeks kind of how we've gotten there and what have you. So um, as we go into this a little bit deeper this morning, we're going to you know, get a little bit deeper into why you know, and why we must understand what we've been prepared for. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's stay in the Word for a little bit longer. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Corinthians 12, 14 through 25, if you'll get there. And kind of the same thing here, a little bit longer reading, but I'd like you just as I read through it, make a mental note in your mind, something hits you that uh, you can share with the class. And then we'll, we'll get a little bit <coughs> deeper into the class in the meaning. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 25. <clears throat> For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members in only one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which 
we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our unseemly members come to have more abundant seemliness, whereas our seemly members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, that there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Now, I know over the years you've read that plenty of times, you've seen it, <clears throat> but just as we went through, anything, anything that hits you in any one of those verses. All right. Yeah, the first thing that came to my mind is that, uh, you know, what it's, why would Paul go through this, this hypothetical situation of body parts talking to each other? Um, and the, uh, the, the reason I think is because there were situations where people, you know, one, people were thinking that their gifts were not valuable. And number two, there might have been others who were thinking that, that somebody else's gifts was not valuable. And it both of them. Just because you think that doesn't make it true. Matter of fact, it's not. Absolutely. Good. Jim? Um, Y'all y'all probably seen this before for years. The first time I noticed it. He's setting up chapter 13 in chapter 12. And so he's talking about the you know, the the gift you have is the right gift for you, and it's the right gift more importantly for the body where you're worshiping. But when you get right down to it, our whole purpose is to express God's love. Good. Don't get lost in in the importance of your gift or or the lack of importance of it. Do do what you're sent here to do. But your main purpose is to take the love that God has placed in you and express that for him. Very good. Here. Um, something that hit me this morning about this is that we make each other better. You know, it talks about the seemingly and the unseemly uh, member and their gifts and um, we make each other better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jack? I think there's a nice comparison here. We all have gifts individually, mm -hmm. each one of us, and those gifts need to be used in our work. But we also have gifts collectively as a mm -hmm. church. And while each one of us has something to offer individually, Collectively, we also offer our gifts along with the one so that we better perpetuate the word in our community. Excellent. Excellent. Tim. I have a question. Is he speaking also um, from the perspective of opinion? Um, because some people may think your gift is not as good as mine or someone else's. That could also be an opinion because he speaks to the fact that everybody's, no matter what you have contributed, it's all important. Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, if you think back a class or two ago, we talked about uh, maybe a little bit of jealousy in the gifts, but every gift counts. Every gift is important. All the gifts together complement us as a church. And if we all had the same gifts, where would we be? He talks about that in here. And you know, we, we wouldn't be much. You know, yesterday, I'm going to use Irvine's birthday surprise as a great example. Um, <clears throat> if I had been the responsible party to cook all of the <laughs> lovely uh, birthday surprise cakes and pies that we had, Everybody that would have attended yesterday would have gone home very disappointed and hungry. <laughs> you slice it, make it not bad. <laughs> but that's what we are in a church. We complement all the way through uh, with our different talents. And he goes on to say very clearly that there, every one of them is important and that in fact, what sometimes we think is less important is really the most important. You know, <clears throat> at the end of class, if, if we have time, we're gonna, and we've done this over the last three weeks somewhat, we're gonna list a little bit more talents if we have time, but sometimes it's the simplest thing. It could be just a touch on the shoulder that the right person can let. Mm -hmm. Tiffany. I, th I think you hit it really well, you know, just like every 
process, every chemical, every organ in the body has to work together to keep us going as individuals. We all have that individual process or just whatever we come to bring as the body of this church, and that's what keeps it moving. Yeah. I, th I think some talents are more visible than others. Mm -hmm. I said, if you can see talent in other people and they're more visible, you know, like the ability to teach and the ability to do other things. And it's up to us to remember and understand that we don't treat those individuals any different than we treat the people that, you know, may have a gift that we don't often see. It may be away from this building. It may be away from, you know, particular. But the gifts are still there, and we need to appreciate them and respect them. Yeah. But to apply this uh, in, a, in a specific area, um, the uh, sometimes the gift, the gift that we have, maybe the gift of our presence, the gift of our presence, and, and that's why it's important when we when we, for whatever reason, are not able to come to church. Um, the church suffers for that. Because you're, I'm not there, you're not there, whoever's not there, there's there's something that's taken away. Absolutely. And, and you know, and that's what bothers me when people say something like, "Well, I'm just not getting anything out of that." That's not, you're you're there to put something in it. That's the exact opposite way to look at that. Uh, we are there to put something in the worship service, whether it just be our presence there, uh, because we encourage people by being there. Absolutely. And I think that that's a very good point there, Troy, for a lot of people who have not yet discovered their gifts or talents. Just being present mm -hmm. and observing what is going on can open up a world of doors. But also presence makes other people feel good that you are there. Some presence on the screen mm -hmm. is just a joy. That's right. and, I, I wish, and there may be a few more that are listening that just don't have their uh, screen on, but everybody's presence. And when we first got in here this morning, there were five or six of us. And then as I watched this room fill up, wow, mm -hmm. I'm sorry I made you guys move up. They would have had some sitting <laughs> in front anyway. That's right. <laughs> but um, so all of that counts. Let me just hit a, a couple of points that I'd written on here, and then we're going to get into eight reasons why we should fully understand uh, our gifts. But in this passage that we just read, <clears throat> a couple of bullet points I wrote down is uh, we're not this the body's not made up of just one. We are many. And you've all heard this uh, description many times in the past. A cord that's made up of just one strand of twine is easily breakable. But that corn that's in the uh, interwoven, eight, 10, 12, 20 strands, those ropes, you just break them. So we're not one, we're many. No one is greater than the other. <clears throat> we're not to be jealous of somebody else's talents if we don't have that, because God apparently didn't want us to have that one. Um, if we all had the same function, we'd be basically uh, useless. God has placed the members and talents as he desired. <clears throat> all of our parts make up this body. The weaker or less important parts oftentimes have even more value. I'll give you an example on that one. Um, about seven, eight years ago, maybe longer than that, probably 10 years ago, I had a really severe hammer toe problem. If those of you know what that is, one toe, the tendons go and the toe grows on top of the other one. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what, when you wear a pair of shoes, it hurts. And I put up with it till I couldn't stand anymore. I finally went to the podiatrist and he said, no problem, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna cut the tendons, a little surgery, we're gonna stick a pin in there. And in about six weeks, you'll be fine. I said, Dr. Adam, I want you to just cut it off. He goes, trust me, do you know how important that toe is? Mm -hmm. And I had no idea mm -hmm. that all 10 toes add to our balance and just not having one of them. And I don't know about the rest of you, toes aren't the most beautiful thing on the body. I don't much care about it. It's hard to bend over and cut toenails anymore. But uh, I think that's the point. You know, every part of this body is important and it doesn't matter. And if you feel like you're not important, we need to talk. Okay, because mm -hmm. you are important, mm -hmm. you are special. Um, <clears throat> the last one is, and I think one of the most important points, there should be no division in the body. 
I mean, when we work collectively in unison, in unity, uh, boy, it's a well-oiled machine, and it's a, it's a good function. We just had the Super Bowl, and we saw two teams that boy, they could function. Okay, so we need to be like that in here, Tom. You know, we don't need to be envious of everybody else's gifts as well, certainly. Um, but we don't need to be jealous of our own as well. We don't need to keep our gift to ourselves and and think that, you know, hey, what I do is really important. Uh, what I do is, you know, what nobody else can do. And then comes along someone else that can do it, you know, and we want to be upset with them because they're doing the same thing we do. We've got to be gracious. We've got to be mature about our own gifts as well as other, other people's gifts. And what does the word say to us about a person who's like that? That the pride becomes, becomes before fall. Absolutely. <laughs> and my goodness. It's pride. And, and I, I just, uh, I heard a sermon, uh, many, many years ago. I can't remember where I was, who did it or whatever, but one of the things that just kind of polishes and makes this, this story uh, from the word stand out is uh, there was this preacher said at his, his church, uh, people took a lot of pride in the way everything looked and people driving up to the building were welcomed so warmly with the flowers and, and the, the way the yard was kept. And he said that there was a little lady who walked with a walker and she developed a, a little a, a seat with rollers on it and she would pull herself up and down the driveway planting flowers. <laughs> and, and, mm -hmm. and, that's great. That it really is. It's a great example. All right. I'm going to give you about uh, eight statements here about uh, why we should know our gifts. I'd like to just talk about each one. So I'm going to read the first one and take it in and, and throw out your comments. Number one, knowing your spiritual gift helps you understand God's will in your life. Knowing your spiritual gift helps you understand God's will in your life. Mm -hmm. What's about that? It goes back to what we were saying about God has a purpose for each of us. Yes. You know, where the body gave us each a purpose. Also forces you, and we talked about this, I think, in our very first class, to do a little self-examination. <clears throat> sure. You know, to say, take inventory of where you're at in your life with your use of your gifts. You know, uh, <clears throat> everybody can't sit back and... Uh, each and every one of us. I mean, and that's not really the purpose. Sometimes people do need a little prodding or a little critiquing. But in general, if, if we will examine ourselves and see what we're doing, it'll come to light pretty quickly. So, Years ago, uh, growing up, you know, you, we, we were taught, you know, God has a purpose for your life. You know, you, you need to figure that out. And I'm a slower learner. Um, so for a long time, I was kind of stuck because I didn't know what the purpose, you know, God's specific purpose for my life was until I finally learned if I make myself available, then I get used all day long. And that became, for me, a bigger lesson than actually figuring out what one thing he wanted me to go do. He just wanted me to be available. And he had things for me to do. You said it better than I did. I mean, we have to make an effort not to put ourselves out there to put our gifts to work. Um, we have to get out of our comfort zone, too. If, if we're not willing to try something, we've never done to get there. Absolutely. We also need to put on a new self. We're, we are told that, you know, through baptism, you know, we become a new creature. We become a new person. So if we're going to show ourselves to be that new person, we're going to have to push our boundaries. We're going to have to get out of our comfort zone. We're going to have to do things knowing and having faith that, you know, God will get us through this. Mm -hmm. 
What God has called you to do, he has gifted you to do. And what he has gifted you to do, he has called you to do. So the onus is on us, okay? So <clears throat> that's all work on developing and understanding um, God's uh, purpose in our life and in his will in our life. Number two, knowing your spiritual gift helps you understand how the Holy Spirit works through you. So, knowing your spiritual gift helps you understand how the Holy Spirit works through you. I think that couldn't be any more true. And I'm going to use Megan as an example. She's unbelievable at painting. So, like, that's like this huge expression coming from her is through her art. And that's how she is able to express beauty and life. <laughs> And I think that's, you know, just, I mean, Cheryl can sing. Chip can get my kids lots of sugar. <laughs> you know, so he's always like, he's just that big kid that everybody just gravitates towards. And they know that, you know, all of those things come together. And that's, that's like a perfect example. Maybe just one family of how different purposes God has placed in one family. That is a great, great example, Tiffany. Great point. Great point. First Corinthians 3 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. We are his fellow workers. And you use your spiritual gifts given by God, allowing God to minister through you, you literally become a co-worker with God. Now, that's the Holy Spirit driving us through and helping us to develop. Kim? Sometimes things also may not be easy as far as your gift is concerned. Maybe there's timely issues, even with Megan. I mean, she doesn't have a whole lot of time to paint. And she may just be bubbling over with some idea of some, something that she wants to do. But now having three kids, and so, you know, the power of the spirit will perhaps help um, either have her have more strength at midnight when everybody is finally asleep, and she can get this whatever it is on the heart done. And that could apply to anyone. There may be something that prevents you, something that's kind of tough to get out of your way so that you can do it. And God's spirit, a lot of times, will help make that, I believe, will make that a little bit uh, easier for you. So in just a couple of comments, just as an aside, we've identified in this little part of this body that Megan has tremendous art talent. Uh, Cheryl has a tremendous talent in singing and Chip can fill people with sugar. Yep. I mean, it's and Joey can cook. <laughs> yeah. Joey can cook. Joey can cook. Yeah, Joey can cook. <laughs> Joey does <laughs> fellowship. <laughs> fellowship. <laughs> four totally, in one family, mm -hmm. four totally different, distinct abilities and talents. And, and Joey and Megan together can make this church look so much better. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately for everyone in this church, they put those talents to work. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. I'm not minimizing anybody else here. I know a lot, a lot of everybody in here does. But that's, that's what it's about. And they've discovered. Number three, listen to this one carefully. Knowing your spiritual gift helps you know what God has not called you to do. Hmm. Knowing your spiritual gifts helps you know what God has not called you to do. What's that telling us? I'm not a song leader. Perfect. Donna says she's not a song leader. I just noticed over the years, like at home, I'm trying to sing songs that we sing. I can't start it. <laughs> Once somebody starts it for me, I know who works. <laughs> You are absolutely right. Not everybody's a song leader. That man raising his hand right back there, Jack Watson, has got an amazing voice. And we just found out about it in the last few months. And I think, go ahead, Jack. Along with numerous other individuals in this church, let me tell you, we need to be careful that we don't overstep our abilities. Just as simple as that. There are those of us that may try to do things that really and truly we're just simply not. <clears throat> We're, we're not prepared for it. And, and that can be very, very tough on a church. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think what we have to be careful of and what this uh, point is telling us is if that's not your gift, 
you got to recognize that and let that one go. Yes. Develop the one you've got. And don't be jealous that you don't have that. That doesn't mean that you can't work on maybe getting that gift better in your life. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. But not everybody is meant to go up to someone right after the death of a loved one. I mean, you know, sometimes it's not even what you say. It's just your presence of being there. But we've probably all seen someone go up in that situation and say the exact wrong thing. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and it wasn't purposely, you know, but that is an awesome talent as well. Um, is there another hand up? Yeah, Carrie. Carrie. <laughs> um, it just made me think I've been in groups before, um, church groups that expected everyone to do the same thing. Yes. And it can become very discouraging, especially for those that don't want it, don't, they know they can't and they don't want to be pressured into something. So it can be discouraging for the body as a whole if that ever happens. One of our points we're going to talk about a little bit is people just feeling like they've been pushed into doing something that really it's not their place. In fact, it might be the next one right here. Number four, knowing your spiritual gift relieves you from certain <laughs> duty. Mm. Knowing your spiritual gift relieves you from serving out of duty. What does that mean? I'm going to go with no, because that's a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Okay. You step out of your comfort zone, that's when you start growing. So while I am horrible at painting, I would love to go with Megan and have her show me how to at least do something so I can maybe help in some way. Okay. Uh, we'll come back on that, Troy. I think I can see the positive side of that statement because if we know our spiritual gift, then that is something that fulfills us. That is something that we want to do, that we receive joy in doing. And so we end up doing it out of fulfillment uh, rather than out of duty. And that's why I think that, you know, it's, it's uh, I mean, that's a, that's a biblical concept that we, uh, now, that doesn't replace the idea, just as, as uh, Tiffany was saying, it doesn't replace the idea of duty. There is duty that's there. And sometimes we do have to step out of our comfort zone to get things done. But the, um, I, I, I honestly believe that if we find our gift and use it for God, then we ourselves will, will just flow out of us naturally, and, and, and we will want to give to God. It will be something we grow toward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does the scripture um, where your heart is there to lie your treasure, does that apply here? I'm sorry, what was that? Where your heart is there to lie your treasure, does that apply here? In, in some respects, I think in that scripture it's pointed a little bit differently. I do think in the act of, in the act of, uh, of knowing your talent, if that's where your heart is, you probably do your best. <coughs> that scripture is not exactly tied to, that, to, to this, to this comment, commentary. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Tiffany, the, the thing that we're trying to say is you're right. It's okay to step out of your comfort zone, but there are some things that we're just not meant to do. Uh, let me use this example. Let's say there's an announcement from the pulpit that says, we need teachers in the children's classes. And it, it, it's really pushed hard, and somebody feels a little bit guilty that maybe they're not doing something. They say they, they'll raise their hand to do it. And they're just not geared to teach a children's class, okay? But they feel like they're doing it out of duty. I, I think that's what we're trying to say here. If you know what you really are good at and what God has uh, led you to do, it comes natural. It's not, like Chip said, just to be in somebody's presence comes natural for him. He's not doing that out of duty, per se, okay? Now, sometimes... We might start with that and find out, hey, man, we're really good at this, and I didn't really think I wanted to do this. And I think that's what you're saying, Tiffany. That's perfectly all right. There are some things that we're just not good at. Like Donna said, you guys don't want me leading singing. And you know, I mean, I can't carry a tune. I would start a song. I, I, I have to deny my, I don't even know how that song begins, okay? And, but I love music, and I would love to be able to do that. 
It's just not about that. Yeah. I think sometimes uh, in our lives, our, our talents, our gifts can wane. They can be less of what they were possibly when we were younger or um, because of physical problem or something. That's when we need to continue to recognize and listen to other people that say that we have a gift for something else. So we can constantly use a gift or whatever gift we might have. I would love to lead singing now, but I, I don't have the voice for it anymore. I did admit a word, but I don't have the voice to do it now. You don't want me to lead singing right now. But that gift ain't. And now I'm trying to recognize other things that, that I may be able to use. Um, and I think that's important for all of us because it doesn't, it doesn't have to be young to old. It can be, you know, by way of an accident, by way of a, a lifetime change. It could be a number of things. Now, thanks for bringing that up in our prior classes. We talked about the fact that over time, sometimes our gifts change. They develop different, differently. Some, some people have many more gifts than other people. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, God has that plan for us and puts it out there, puts it out there. We've got to de develop it, find it, put it to work. Okay. Number five, knowing your spiritual gift fills a deep inner need. Knowing your spiritual gift fills a deep inner need. Yeah. I think knowing your spiritual gifts is a lot like performing your performing deeds, as the book of James talks about. Um, James finally comes to the conclusion that uh, you say faith without works is dead. I'll show you my faith is, or my works are with my faith, and certainly without using our gifts to perform the good deeds that we need to perform, we are certainly not, we, we would be displaying our faith at the same time. I was going to say my daughter went to a, Christian, a couple years in a Christian college. She wanted to be a school teacher. And I think she learned that God called her not to do that because she would throw up on us every night when somebody mm -hmm. would come to observe the class. But she is a one on one student, um, special ed. Wow. But, so I think if you're vomiting every night and somebody's going to be reviewing, mm -hmm. I don't think that's something God might not be coming to do. <laughs> that is a great uh, example, great comment. Thank you, Paul. Tom? I think um, in answer to your question, I think we all inherently want to serve God. We want to do his will. We want to do his commandments. We want to live our lives like Jesus Christ. And we even sing the song, blessed are they who do his commandments. So we use our gifts, you know, in our hearts, in our minds, we're serving God. We're serving the church and we're helping it to grow by using the gift that we have. And when you do that, you are growing yourself as well, because when you have had the opportunity to share your talents, share your gifts, it makes you feel good inside. It makes God smile. You know, I mean, we are co-laborers, we're workers together. He put us here. Maybe that person needed you at that point. Maybe that family needed you. Maybe they needed that phone call, that note, whatever it is you can do. Uh, it, it's just the little things, but the other thing as we serve and it fills us inside, it builds our confidence, it builds our strength, it gives us experience. You know, sometimes we go out and serve and make a mistake, and that's okay too. Sure. You know, it, it's not always pleasant, but that's part of developing and fine tuning all of this. Okay. Good. Thank you for your comments on that. Uh, know, number six, knowing your spiritual gift builds unity among Christians. I think we kind of hit on that one a, a little while ago, just in, in describing uh, the McGee Sykes family. But, you know, it, it's once we all kind of know where we're good at or where we think those talents are, we need to use each other. 
You know, we need to sometimes pick up the phone and say, hey, Sue, you are really good at reaching out to people, and I really think so-and-so over here would love a phone call. Sue may not know that that person could use a phone call, you know, um, <clears throat> but all of us have our own contacts with somebody, people we're closer to, we know everybody intimately, but once we understand and know much more about each other, we can share with each other and use each other in, in our talents, but we don't all have the same thing. Anybody ever experienced situations like that? Oh yeah, just last week with our sister Kim and her cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was very nice. Uh, yeah, Kim, what you and Mike did, preparing those cards for everybody to send out to start this connect was just tremendous, you know? And yeah. I don't think anybody asked Kim to do that. No. Like, they just did it on their own. And um, the encouragement that, you know, just being here, makes me feel so loved and you know some people i see on a weekly basis here they don't even have to say a word to me but i know how they feel and i know that they're they're learning the same thing i'm learning we're worshiping the same god and um, so the love that i feel for everybody is also received and that is so encouraging yeah. Tom? Well, what's encouraging to uh, to us is um, right back at you, Sue. I mean, we saw in you, um, as far as the ministry for the worship, and as far as the church, um, somebody that would be tremendous at greeting people um, because you have such a good heart and you have such an outgoing personality. People are, are relaxed when they talk to you. So you're out there giving bulletins, you're out there talking to people, and you have no idea what kind of impact you're making. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Oh, well, thank you. I, I do the same thing at work, and I, you know, people that don't know me, but eventually, you know, they, um, they, you know, they, they haven't been to church for so long, or they don't even <coughs> know that, you know, God is, you know, should come first in our lives. But yet, as soon as I open the subject, they're like a sponge. But, you know, I mean, God is using me definitely in different areas. And I know that. Um, so that is encouraging right there. You know, what I learned from all of you as well. So. The other nice thing about uh, gifts, sometimes they occur and you don't even realize that people are doing them. <clears throat> That's why we have to be very careful about ever judging people or assuming things because you don't know. Now, I hope I don't embarrass him, and I don't think I will, but I am. I got Juan sitting right in front of me right now. <laughs> and a lot of you may not know that about three or four months ago, Juan and maybe your brother might have helped you in some other way, got out here and fixed this playground up mm -hmm. to where it's safe for the kids again and did a number of things, but he is a talented carpenter, among other things, that uh, probably half of you here wouldn't even know that Juan had done that, you know. Now, you know Juan's a carpenter. That doesn't mean call him up for every favor. <laughs> <laughs> but young Christian, mm -hmm. you guys haven't been married that long. Is it two years yet? Or Almost three. Almost three, okay. No children. This is the thing, no children. He got out there and fixed that playground. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what that's what I know. Yeah. He's got a tremendous gift there. And, Absolutely. And that gift is just as important as the person who can put the arm around the individual who's just lost a, a child or a spouse or something. Right. It all adds up. We also don't know the impact that we make. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes for years. It may be that somebody needs you today, yep. this morning, yep. and needs you to come up to them and say, I am so glad you are here. God bless you. Mm -hmm. you know, and you may not even know about that or ever hear about that. But to that person, you're their heart. You're their hero. Absolutely. Jenny? Something that I think this pandemic has very much brought to light is when we aren't all together, 
there are gifts that are missing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you don't realize it, you know, maybe something comes up and we need this to be done, but oh, yeah. the person who has always done this in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really brought to light how, you know, it's talking about the body parts and how with this, it has caused some of the body parts not to be present. Yeah. And, you know, for, you know, very good reasons, but still mm -hmm. you miss the body parts. Yeah. This, I promise this is not a wife husband setup. <laughs> That's a perfect segue. <laughs> this, is a perfect, this is a perfect segue. Everybody in this room can look around today and you know somebody who has not been coming because of the pandemic. The reasons may be uh, very much medically concerned. I mean, Sarah Cox has uh, breast cancer, so she's not going to get out in, in this, but just sending these people a note mm -hmm. saying, I just miss seeing your face. Mm -hmm. I just miss seeing you in worship <coughs> the day you're back in here, <coughs> back in here with us. You know, the, and every single one of us can do that without any problem. Just don't look around and take the initiative. We go to Betty, then I'll come to you, Paula. Betty? I'm going to piggy, uh, piggyback on what Jenny was talking about. Um, and, and I think Mandarin does a wonderful job of uh, encouraging people uh, uh, to volunteer and use their gifts. But um, I think we can always do more. Sure. And one area that I see is we might say, if you could help with uh, teaching a class, well, some people might go, like, oh, horror, I can't teach. You know, I mean, I just, sometimes I think we need to stress what comes under that education department. There may be, they might be willing to go in and just assist, help keep the children in line, or they might be willing to, uh, do art projects if it's coming up to vacation Bible school time. Uh, what exactly falls in the education department? They might be willing to do one of the others after they've done it for a while and watched a teacher. They might be willing to get that teachers out, take it for that, that one time. And uh, other departments, fellowship, exactly what called that fellowship. They go, oh, I, I can do that. I can do that part. Uh, sometimes if you just say the title, it, it's like, oh, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd be good at that. As leadership, we need to do a better job of explaining to people that aren't necessarily going to get burned out. And that's what we're doing <laughs> so often. Yeah, I know. That's I, so it's true. And, and unfortunately, I think most churches are like that. Yeah. They? But we, we need to work on that. No, thank you. Uh, uh, okay, let me let Paul I'll come right back. Uh, that's what time I have. And really the way the started the class, he then made spider web out of yarn. You know, spider webs are beautiful. But anyways, what he had to do, he had to say that what he had to do is that each person's class is full of strength. And it's like talking about how the spider web is so intricate and complex, but it was kind of relating that as each of us pulled a string, you know, the spider web slowly collapsed and that each of us were a fourth. This is how he was relating that. Mm -hmm. That's a great issue. Yeah. A great description as well. Thank you. I heard that one. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody? Uh, I was just, just wanting to say how very important it is to uh, be a, child, a, a teacher in the children's department. Uh, there's an attitude of, uh, well, you know, anybody can do it. You, know, you just volunteer for a month. Well, that's not what kids need. And and use an expression, well, it's not brain surgery. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> and it's very important that a person who takes that responsibility on, it may not be prepared to do it, but they can learn. And, uh, and the main thing is to think that 
a person who goes in a class and is just teaching two children, that can be more important than what's going on in the pulpit. That's life. And, and it is important. And there are resources out there to help prepare people for that. And there was a wonderful lady over at uh, uh, one of the congregations who just developed uh, teaching children. And she came up with ideas and she was willing to teach uh, classes. And, uh, when we were over at Edgewood, uh, we would do that. And it was amazing how she could make that talent come to life in people where they didn't even know they had it. But you just need to take advantage of what's out there. Absolutely. All right, we are at the end of time. I have these last two points, I want to share them with you. We basically dis discussed them throughout these other discussions. Number seven was knowing your spiritual gift equips you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. We certainly hit on that. And the last one, knowing your spiritual gift adds to your self-acceptance. That will help us grow and give us confidence and helps us in our maturity. We started the class four or five weeks ago with this quote, and I want to close it uh, with it again because I think it uh, really hits to the heart of the matter. It was a quote from Irma, Bob, Irma Bombeck that said, when I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say I used everything you gave me. Yeah. I think if we, <laughs> if we could model that in our lives, this church will go, grow like crazy even more. We will be strengthened and, uh, and unified like never before. So. Anyway, thank you all. Y'all have been great. Um, we started the uh, class next Sunday. So I'm still thinking about it. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Oh, no, I hope I didn't embarrass you. No, I'm proud of you. I went to a late spot right now.